they do all this hard work to get the sale, to get the lead, uh, to get the customer, whichever way, and then it just stops. We interrupt this program to bring you this important message. Welcome to Marketing Interruption, a daily podcast powered by Blue Tusker that interrupts your day with marketing news, tips and strategies from an entrepreneur who lives and breathes marketing. Now, let the interruption begin with your host, Andrew Ma. Hello and welcome to episode number 13, Marketing Interruption. My name is Andrew Maftone. I will be your host. And today we are talking about why marketing shouldn't end after the sale. This one is a very interesting topic for me because I've, I've found this in almost every brand I've ever worked in where they do all this hard work to get the sale, to get the lead, uh, to get the customer, whichever way, and then it just stops and it ends there. And that is simply just not how it should be done. And one of the reasons I say this is because, A, the most obvious one is buyer's remorse is a real thing. You don't want someone to feel like they had their hand held all the way up to the the point of purchase or the basically the conversion, any lead or however you want to look at that, and then feel like, all right, okay, bye, I got what I wanted. Um, you're basically like one night standing <laughs> this uh, person, which is kind of messed up. So one of the things that I've always referenced is there's a ton of things you can market to them after. So you have the obvious stuff, right? Like, all right, you can upsell, you can cross sell, you can do all this extra stuff or after, but sometimes when you do, um, specifically I found this obviously for ourselves when I was doing agency stuff or when I'm doing more like B2B or service related where, yeah, I can upsell them, but it's not yet. It's not ready for that. And one of the things I always like to do is to find other ways of things that I can provide some extra value to them after a sale so that they feel like, oh, I, they, I, they just gave me, you know, what they, uh, what I bought from them. So they got what they wanted, but they're still giving me some extra here. And it really makes them feel more comfortable about what they just did. So a couple examples I had for you, uh, works really well with B2B, um, specifically where you can do, uh, post, uh, so you can do post conversion, uh, post customer, uh, acquisition, um, ads in some cases. So it can work pretty well for some B2B. It does work well for e-commerce also, but kind of depends on which e-commerce, but there's a lot of other areas this could work. But essentially create uh, either some kind, of, some, some kind of community. So a Facebook group, if you're doing social ads, or you could also do like a Slack community or something like that, where you try to bring everyone into one place. So for example, uh, when I was targeting e-commerce sellers, we did this where we created a Facebook group that was specifically for e-commerce sellers, and then we would break off that group for, you know, uh, eight-figure sellers and things like that. Then I've done uh, Slack communities for staffing agencies where we did, hey, join this uh, Slack community, and if you're for, it's strictly for staffing agencies and things like that. And those were all ads that we ran after the conversion. When you're doing B2B and you have that kind of personal con- conversation with someone, you don't necessarily need to do that. You could Those could, o- those could also be um, ads that you run after someone has converted with just any other gated content. Um, but if you do e-commerce and maybe you're selling more B2B related e-commerce equipment, so like bigger machines or something like that, it's another great way to have some kind of community. And honestly, I think the best thing about those groups are that you can you can control the conversation if you want, um, or you can just sit back and, and listen to what all your customers are talking about. I mean, it's a great way to come up with like ideas for like blog posts and stuff that you want to write is you just go into the group and be like, what's everyone talking about? Like, all right, let me write one of those. Um, the other thing was case studies. So this is a great for an upsell. Um, it's also great for, uh, you to be able to explain to a client um, th- that the decision they made was great. So a lot of SaaS companies do this kind of thing where they'll send out an email with, hey, we have this great story about this company that used our software to go from X to Y, um, from or Y to X, X to Z, A to Z. Let's do that. Um, alphabet. And uh, so you can do things like that where you can show them the, you can show them a case study and you basically be like hey look look this worked really well and then this is their opportunity to go hey 
may, uh, why is this not working for me is probably what they're going to say. But that's your opportunity to go, you know what, let's look into your account. Let's see what you have set up. And then that's your opportunity to either A, upsell them on other stuff, or B, to help adjust what they're doing in their account, which hopefully will help them be better at business, which then becomes a referral situation, which brings me into the next one, referrals. So doing a referral program, some, running some kind of, of, of campaign after an acquisition and explain to them that they can join a referral program. And yes, maybe there's some kickback uh, depending on how you put that campaign together. But there's a lot of things that, that can still happen that are not necessarily upsell opportunities. Upsell opportunities seem pretty obvious, so I don't want to touch on those. But assuming that they bought everything from you that they could possibly buy. So maybe you offer certain services and they bought every freaking service. So great. What else can you do? There's always more you can do. And that idea of, of bringing them all into a group and controlling that conversation or having them become a referral or anything along those lines, or even just sharing case studies with them just so that they know like, hey, the decision you made to work with us was a good one. We did it for so-and-so. We can do it for you. Um, these are all great ways to market people after a sale or after they become a customer. Uh, yeah, that was it. That was all I wanted to touch on today. So obviously, thank you. Please rate, review, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And make sure you shoot me any questions you may have to marketing interruption at bluetusker.com. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for joining us for today's marketing interruption. Make sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the show. And don't forget to email marketinginterruption at bluetusker.com with any marketing questions you'd like to have answered on the show. And head over to marketinginterruption.bluetusker.com to catch up on past episodes. Until next time, we now return you to your regularly scheduled programming.